Stone. And today I'd like to uh, discuss with you a little bit about uh, what is happening in Venezuela. Uh, it's an economic disaster of catastrophic proportions. And it's all because of socialism. Um, there's a, really an excellent article written by uh, two individuals from that country, Rafael Acevedo and uh, Luis Sirocco. And uh, it's really quite well done. It's, it's available if you like to go read it at uh, the Mises uh, Institute. And the title is How Socialism Ruined Venezuela. Venezuela. And uh, anyway, let's just kind of look what they have to say because they're, they're from there. They understand their culture. And if you look back, <coughs> uh, the country had economic freedom for quite some time. However, uh, they did not have political freedom. Uh, from about the first half of the uh, 20th century, uh, the country was ruled by dictators or military generals, and, um, and so they didn't have the right to vote, uh, so there was really no political freedom, but the rulers, the dictators, uh, did privatize uh, quite a bit of the businesses, and in uh, the early part of the 20th century, they began to open up their oil industry, which was largely privately owned and operated. And uh, what this economic freedom did is it led to the development of uh, quite a bit of wealth. Taxes were relatively low and, and the government's expenditures uh, amounted to about 20% of their GDP, most of which went to uh, produce or construct infrastructure in the country. And so they, they just detail that uh, in, in here. Well, uh, political freedom came to the country about the, uh, in the 1950s. And uh, so people were allowed to vote. There was a, a, a coup and, and the dictatorships were overthrown. And then political freedom entered the picture. But people took for granted their economic freedom. They, they, they didn't understand that freedom uh, is is really important and it really is built upon what we uh, at the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics would say is a three-legged stool. That uh, <clears throat> real freedom for a culture involves three legs of freedom and that those would be political freedom, economic freedom, and religious freedom. And uh, so <clears throat> uh, I, religiously, we, I'm not really sure what was going on. They don't mention it in the article uh, in the country of Venezuela. But we can uh, begin to think about, okay, they, they gained political freedom, but in the process, they began to give up economic freedom. <clears throat> and it was uh, the government began to grow, and little by little it was chipping away at the rights of the people to engage in free trade with uh, rent controls, other sorts of price controls of various sorts, taxes, uh, subsidies to certain privileged businesses and so forth. And, uh, and so this went little by little. It was uh, what has been going on really around the world in terms of the kinds of democratic socialism. However, it took a, a turn for the worse uh, when Hugo Chavez was elected president in 1998. And he was a populist declaring a radical form of socialism, very similar to the kind of socialism that's being spewed out uh, in amongst uh, young people today uh, in our own country, demanding that we have socialism. Well, be careful what you ask for, uh, because what has happened in the country of Venezuela is just a disaster. It went from bad to worse. Uh, Chavez began by expropriating uh, private property from people. Uh, I was talking with one person uh, and he said his family had a, a potato farm and uh, the government just came and took it away from the family. <laughs> of course, uh, potatoes became very scarce in the country after a very short period of time. Uh, and today, what has happened is inflation is out of control. Let me just read what they say about what the money will buy. 
in the article they, they mentioned this. He says, you know, uh, in 2007, the largest denomination of paper money in, in the country was a hundred Bolivar bill. Uh, with it, you could buy 20 U.S. dollars, uh, 288 eggs, or 56 kilograms of rice. Now, today, you can buy a penny with a hundred Bolivar uh, bill. You can only get two tenths of an egg. You can only get uh, eight one hundredths of a kilogram of rice. This is what's happened to the money. Uh, socialists have no other option. I mean, they're just going to print stuff, uh, print money up like that will create uh, economy and wealth. And it's foolish. It's a delusion. They've destroyed freedom. The young people there understand that they have. They don't have a future. People are eating garbage. They don't have health care. They. Uh, it, it's a disaster. And. Uh, it would happen anywhere where real socialism is tried. Well, I hope this is helpful to you in thinking about the subject. Uh, once again, Dr. Paul Cleveland and Boundary Stone. Check out our website. We're trying to provide you with resources so that you can understand the culture in which you live. See you next time.